Welcome back to Beers and Break Evens. Super coach fucking sucks, is what I'm going to say to me, because this week was brutal. We got away with it okay, but uh, other people out there, my God, what a week it was. Yeah, mate. Black Friday, it was done. Ooh, yeah, boy. just. All these popular super coach players going down, and it just set the tone for the entire weekend. It was uh, it was brutal. Teddy with his concussion, Sammy Walker not as popular, but even about four or five percent ownership. Dom Young, Dom Young send off. Ruben Garrick into the Saturday, getting his early HA. Liam Henry, uh, as you said, mate, we got out of it pretty well. So counting our lucky stars, but what a weekend. Pretty wild. And I've just seen the wildest thing uh, to come out of this week. Uh, in our little document, we have uh, you put your score and then you put – it says score, then you put your score in next to it. And uh, the score is in uh, Ariel size 11 font. <laughs> Katmandu has dropped hers in in size 45 Roboto bold just to let me know that she beat me. So uh, really uncalled for, really uncouth stuff. How are you, Kat? I'm good. You know, I copied it straight from the Supercoach app and it came – it arrived that large and I decided to keep it. I thought they did the work for me. So I'm going to put that at the top of my list of shit that didn't happen. <laughs> She's full of it. Making a statement. Making a huge statement. Rue. Katmandu. <laughs> Rue, we are. It's not often I compliment you and I'm about to put you on blast, so I'll start with a compliment, but you finally <laughs> offered super coaches something and your relentless campaign of Curran for Jewel, it got there. And made us a current owner and someone needing a third front rower. I'm very grateful, so thank you, sir. Yo, Adrian, <laughs> we did it. How good. <laughs> Fucking love that. Uh, yeah, yeah, more so for my draft team, but <laughs> yeah. it's good for classic. I'll take it. Good news. You'll enjoy this. I brought AFB last week, so didn't actually need it after all. But, yeah, good uh, times. So there's my second story. <laughs> oh, oh, Friday afternoon, being the transparent super coacher and content creator that I am, I uh, had a change of plans and Joey Manu in the rain was going up against Stephen Crichton, a great defender. Next This weekend he was going up against Bradman Best, another great defender. Backflipped and went, didn't get Joey Manu and got Valentine Holmes and I was just waiting for it, waiting for it. Good call to be fair, Stephen Crichton kept him to a quiet 108. Stephen Crichton <laughs> kept him to 16. <laughs> then he moved to fullback and he put on another 90 points. I love how Marty just consistently fucks you. Oh, my it's God. The best. He's just, it is so good. He kills me. <laughs> anyway, the, the logic was sound until Tedesco got hit into another dimension. Uh, so when Val went out there, I'm like, if Val doesn't score well here, this is really going to hurt me. And he went well and I skipped him. So it was all okay in the end. Um but you went straight away, of course you did. Put me on blast on your social media channels to your, <laughs> to your billions of followers and saying, Tim's backflipped, oh, he's following me into Val. La, la, la. Anyway, got to Sunday afternoon, that Cowboys game, and Scotty Drinkwater went nuts, Tao Lungy scored, <laughs> and I'm sitting there going far out. I'm like, Guru's nailed this, and I knew you captain Drinkwater. And you said we sent scores to each other Sunday night, and I was like... Hmm, went pretty low considering like Drinky 288 as captain. <laughs> Wasn't until Monday morning got in for the Bloke in a Bar podcast and I'm like, mate, what happened? Are you go, oh, I, I backflipped on my drink in town, Lungy Jades brought in Pappenhausen. <laughs> Mate, my Thursday was like that Simpsons episode where uh, Barney joins NASA and he's just backflipping all over the place. I went fucking nuts. I was all over the place. Um, I ended up, yeah, <laughs> okay. I ended up looking at my front row forward and I just, I answered a thousand DMs of what do I do, what do I do? And I was like, oh. And then it was like, I'm going to go Liam Henry. I'm going to go this guy. And I'm like, I fucking hate all these yeah. dudes. This sucks. And I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm buying AFB. I'll keep him there. He'll play during Origin. I don't want to look at front row forward anymore. Little did I know Sam Hughes would turn into fucking Artie Beatson on Friday <laughs> afternoon and score a try and base about 40. Unbelievable. But anyway, I'll, I'll fight that one another day. Uh, and then I made the decision, mate. I really – I loved Drinky. I fucking – and then – but because I haven't been draft, I had a moment where I sat there and I went, is this just your draft bias? Are you just being draft biased, Drinky? Mm. 
So then I flipped on that and I thought, you know what? I'll spend a little bit less cash. I'll go Pappy. I really like his draw over the next few weeks, mm. but I thought he'd do. Well, he should have done better than what he did the other yeah. night when they scored 30 fucking points. <laughs> so I ended up going Pappy. And then the other one I wanted was Murray Tualungi, who scored. Uh, I didn't end up going him because I don't think I went anyone that I said I was going to. Um, and I can't even recall who I went. Oh, Blaze. Blaze Tualungi. Shout out to him. Hope he does well in reserve grade this week. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was a good week out. A good week out. Tell Lungy 79. Yeah, unders. Yeah, so... Um, and, and it gets better. Who'd you trade out for for um, for Blaze to Lungy? Oh, yeah, fucking Xavier Savage who also put a 90 <laughs> oh, on. No. So, yeah, it was it was a tough week. It was uh, it wasn't much to enjoy. And I was I was actually sitting there on Sunday night because I, I completely forgot I hadn't given you any of that context. Yeah. So I'm sitting there at home going, oh, that smug little prick. <laughs> He's going to be sitting down there enjoying himself, laughing and giggling. Got it on Monday and you'll and then I realised you thought I kept him drinky still and I was like, oh. Even worse. Yeah, it's heaps worse now. <laughs> I just saw your face turn into fucking Luna Park. And He's I got like, the live reaction. Fuck this guy. Ugh. Yeah, it was a tough gig. It was a uh, it was a tough gig this week. Um, but God, there was people out there that did it tougher. <sighs> yeah, I've like for seen. some people, their season finished in round five. Yeah, <laughs> how were some of the horror stories out there? Like, saw people that captain Dom Young for negative thirty points, yes. the second lowest supercoach score of all time, behind Nathan Brown's na- uh, negative sixteen last year. Uh, people that had, yeah, Dom Young captain, they had Teddy, they had Walker, they had Garrick. Like, we say it time and time again, Rue, injuries happen, but there's a limit where, and we say don't get upset because injuries happen, what goes around comes around, but there's a line, and when it crosses it, when you have all those blokes, you're allowed to explode. How, uh, uh, geez, people that brought Dom Young a few weeks ago. And go back and check the tapes. We said to you, yes. do not buy him because he will murder Blake Taff and get sent off. We, yeah, I think <laughs> people we're, just don't listen. That was a quote. That was yeah. a quote. Quite, yeah, that was... I was, think you actually uh, brought that into existence. Yeah, it was... Yeah. Uh, we, ma- we manifested it. You manifested it. But in all seriousness, the people that brought in Dom Young, like we, we were both against it, which is all good and well, but I couldn't have possibly expected it to go as badly as it... I'm pretty sure... Have. It was one of them one, Drew, where you go... And this we would have quoted. It would have been like, worst case scenario, he goes poor, he goes poor, but with the 150 inch rolling average, he makes you, you know, 50 to 100K. You can't account for a negative 15. Across the two week span, he ended up making $2,000. Uh. But even more important, more than to the point, like Desi Creek was on the podcast last night and he was saying he had a decision between Val Holmes and Dom Young. Oh, God. And at the last minute he went with Dom Young. Oh. So it's like, okay, sure, it cost cash, but there's about 180 points worth of difference in there. Jeez, that is tough. Yeah. My God. Mm. Yeah. When you have a look at Dom Young over the last few weeks, all of a sudden Sonny Luke looks like a great buy last year. <laughs> very, very tough. How did you go after all that, mate? <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that name to me. Uh, <laughs> speaking of great hookers, Danny Levi. Another meat pie. Ken Irvine. Yeah, Kenny Irvine. <laughs> Unbelievable. I, uh, mate, when that kick went infield and I saw his fucking mohawk and shit appear in the middle, I was like, you're fucking joking. You're kidding. Mate, to think to think that Palacia was just like crawling me early on in the season and then him getting ruled out in round three or four or whenever it was – meant that I had to hold Levi and not get Appy in. And Levi just keeps on scoring tries. He's now made 119K. He's got a break even of negative two. That's wild. He's averaging 44 insane. with three tries. <laughs> <laughs> it's impressively no, four, four, shit, eh? Four tries. Four tries in five <laughs> games. Oh, I've got nothing but respect for you, Danny. Full fucking credit to you. Uh, unreal. Now... Uh, we will do a little catch up on the about even group, which I'll get Kat to jump up on her computer. We'll have a look at that in a second. Uh, but our weekly winner for this week, let's get stuck into that. And we have got prizes coming your way. We actually, we've made an executive decision this morning as me and Timmy tend to do. Um, your hats this year are going to be a little bit different. Uh, so stay tuned for those. I think you're going to really like them and they will be coming very, very soon. Uh, but our – geez, shout out to Sab is coming second in our group. Mm, Not bad. 27th overall. 
What a fucking no! Now the guy that is lead that scored the most points in our group this week, his team. Now you know the old "Let's Go on Warriors." Mm. It's "Let's Go on Gurus." Oh, Shout out to you, Callum. No. You've had it tough. Your parents spelt your name with a K, but you've come out a winner this week. Let's go on, Gurus. My guy, Callum. There might be a little something extra in your <laughs> prizes coming your way. Must have been nude in there or something. So very, very lucky for you, Callum. Uh, one, 1,426. Whoa. Good God. Oh, yeah, that's a big score. That is insanity. Can that you see is his wild. team? Um, yeah, let's have a look. Oh, might be a sniper term. Um, his captain, he's got Jaden Beryl as his hooker. Oh, we don't we don't accept sniper teams either. Is it a sniper team? Let me have a look. I'm not sure. You're better at this than me. I'm just trying to load it, mate. Um, I'm not sure if this is a sniper team. He's got Joe Tan. He's got Egan. No, he's 1,200 overall. Yeah, yeah. As I said, I'm not sure if it is. I just uh, the Jaden Beryl as captain at hooker really threw me at the start. <laughs> ah, so the top scorer this week went with a uh, went with enough hooker at the start of the season, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Not a bad play, bro. <laughs> oh, please. Not bad. Mm. Not bad. Not also, bad, not shout bad. out in our overall group to oh, what are we doing? Here? Seventh place overall, the GC Gophers. <laughs> Corey, he's a mate of mine, 64th overall, flying. Also, he actually came to our uh, Nosebleeds live show. Corey did Cowboy. Cowboy Corey. Good footy. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's a good fellow. I like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He kind of looks like Reese Robson. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Reese Robson kind of looks like him. Yeah, when you hit, you stay hit. Goes good. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but also, once again, uh, our, our, our second overall points score is Savs. Credit to him. Doing content and doing well is yeah. fucking hard to do. So shout out to Savs. Tough Sabre. combination. Very tough. I, I hope you keep trucking, brother. That's very, very <laughs> impressive. Um, and I'd be more than happy to give you five grand out of Tim's pocket. Okay. Six. Oh, six. Be. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, he'd be a club member. Savs no, a club it's, member. It's six anyway. Oh, it's six anyway, you yeah. Idiot. But Savs would be a <laughs> It's our own prize. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Good morning, boys. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> um, but, yeah, Savs would also be a club member of about nine clubs, I reckon. Yeah, He I loves so. it, Savs. Sav Quando. All right. Can you want the About Even update? Yeah, what's doing over there? Okay, so this, this weekend, uh, let's check. So you both – actually, we all won our head-to-heads. Oh, nice. Great. Great. Yep. So Guru Grizzlies, you beat Mean Machine – Kuma Stallions, you beat Heinz Hounds, and I beat Was a Bum. Love nice. that. Did, who who were the na- Do Do we I, have names? Was I Tommy Burma? I, I'm going to look at the overalls now to. Was to it Tommy Burma? That, that who is who? One second. So Warren is the Was a Bums. That's who I versed. Heinz Hounds is Thomas. <laughs> it's not Burma. It's no. Oh, Tom. Tobler. Big, Might be Tobler. Yeah, yeah. It's Might Tobler. Be Tobler. Big, big. The. <laughs> Sorry. That <laughs> Big Day Boys. <laughs> Big Day Boys is yeah, that, um, that's Burma. Uh, he's yeah, Burma yeah. he's still last. Um, Shock me. And, and, and Harley Smith Shields played this week. Yeah. Tough. Crazy. Anyway. Where, where are we sitting on the ladder? So that's where the big update is. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh, yeah. Timmy has overtaken you. Oh, yes. He's now in second place. Now you are even on, on wins. You've yeah. both got a total of eight points. Yeah. But um, the overall scores, Timmy, you're about 65 points ahead of uh, Guru now. Yeah, well, so you beat me three weeks in a row and you're only 65 ahead. I thought you'd be further. You always find a way to turn it around, don't you? I try to. <laughs> um, is Sebo still first? Yeah. Uh, Cody's first. Cody. Sebo I yeah. love, yeah. love that. Yeah. And Where, where's Sebo uh, dropped uh, to? I just realised. Hold on. Let me let me point scored. No, this is still correct. So... And then I'm down in seventh. Not that seventh. anyone asked. Um, <laughs> Where, where's Sebo dropped to? Sebo is fourth. Fourth. Okay. Yeah, pretender. Sorry, guys. How I many should... points are you on, Rue? Oh, I was 12.31 on the weekend. 7,600 overall. Yep. I was... Uh, I scored 1,064, I'm 12,960, and I've scored 5,106. Yeah, so yeah I've so got you by 65 points. Yeah, how many how many points have you scored altogether, Carter? My overall is 4,981. 
four nine eight. Oh, okay, sweet. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, only so like two hundred points behind you, so. Or you're even less behind. Even me. less. You're you know, I was being generous. Him. I didn't yeah, want to scare yeah. you. I appreciate that. That's good gear. <laughs> um, okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Now. Um, this now make sure the weekly winner there. Uh, let's go on gurus, beers and break evens at gmail.com. You will get your prize in a couple of weeks. They are coming out. We're in the process of sorting that. So make sure you send your email, send your goddamn address, send your address where you live. I'll give you the hot tip, guys. I cannot guess where you live. I can try, but the odds are stacked against me unbelievably heavily. So please send me your home address. I might send Timmy around there to rough you up. I don't know. Um, now, today in the Roo Crew, which is my Patreon, the link is in the description. I'm dropping a new stats thing in there today, which I highly advise you go and check out. My mates over at the Weekly Rubdown, Natty and Wooka, uh, they have for years been putting out these incredible draft stats. And what I've, as, as you guys know, I'm a draft guy, just out here having a red hot crack, a classic. I've just been lost in the wilderness for two or three years collecting trophies, just taking on a giant of the game and Timmy SC playbook will. Williams. Uh, but what I've been doing for the last few years is taking their draft stats and actually applying it in my weird language to classic. And it's worked okay for me over the last few years. So I sat down with them at the start of this year. I said, I want to turn your stats into a classic format. I've said it to them before, but they're, they're draft guys. So they never had any interest. So anyway, we've gone through, we've worked it all out. Walker, he's, he's been deep in his little wizard wizard fucking science lab in there sorting it all out uh, and we finally think we've got it to a point where I think it'll be really useful you guys essentially what it is they take all the stats from the year and they line them all up for fullback left wing right wing left center right center left edge back row right edge back row all that sort of stuff <coughs> match them up against teams their strength of schedule all that sort of stuff and it's for every single player so what I've used it over the last few years is to find pods uh, that I've used in my classic team sometimes they've completely the shit the bed sometimes i've done incredibly well um and then on a so that'll be on wednesday that'll come at midday then at 1 p.m uh there'll be an article that comes out sort of summarizing all the key stuff position by position and then thursday i'll do a big context uh video and podcast which will only be in the Roo crew where i give all my thoughts on it what i like what i don't like um so yeah a heap of heap of stuff coming in the Roo crew this week eight dollars a month Two dollars a week. Uh, one thing I will stress to you guys is that these stats—they are not hold your hand, take you to the water, make you drink. They are a weapon in your arsenal. So just something that you use, along with Timmy's stats, which we'll talk about in a minute. But. All these things, they are weapons that you have in your arsenal that you use. This is going to provide you probably too much information, to be completely honest with you, and you just per cherry pick. You don't you don't perry chick. You cherry pick what you want from that, Timmy, and utilize all that sort of stuff. So the link is in the description, the Roo Crew uh, community that is growing very quickly, and it's become – I actually originally, Timmy, I opened it, and then I thought I'll add another Supercoach tier to it. Then I got in there, and I just realized I had all Supercoach maniacs in there, so I thought, fuck it, let's just put it all in here. <laughs> Let everyone enjoy it. It was just it was too much to consume to the point where people that don't play Super Coach messaging was like, "Hey, for the Q and A's, can you do a separate NRL one? Because I don't give a fuck about yeah. Super Coach, and it's all the questions." I went, "Yep, completely fair. Play on. Super so Coach is king. All in there. Super Coach is king, and these stats will be king. And you've got something coming as well. Yeah, data related drop also." So very soon. So yeah. we'll probably touch on it more next week. I reckon. Don't want to go the early crow and. Uh, yeah, we'll just give it a week, but some big data stuff. I think they can work hand in hand quite nicely, but some exciting stuff coming up. Well, yeah, this is what when I showed to me the stat stuff that I'm doing, he sort of said, Oh, well, that'll work well with mine. And we had a look at it. It was honestly like a jigsaw. Yeah, it's beautiful. Coming and, uh, together. And I've had a sneak peek of yours and some red hot content in there. A lot of like, I'm a fiend for like soft and um, hard defensive edges yeah. like where points score, where super coach points are scored and that, some cracking stuff around that. And I'll tell you what, around that too, if you're having a little uh, flutter over the weekend, these things yeah. will help you out as well. Very handy there as well. So all of that in the Roo Crew, go hit the link in the description, go check it out. Appreciate yous, love yous, good gear. Let's move to super our coach. Teamless Tuesday. Let's talk a little bit of super coach <laughs> here and there. Uh, Thursday, we've got the Knights and the Chooks going head-to-head -head from up there at Newcastle, 8 p.m. For the Knights, the only thing to note is Greg Marshew on the extended bench. Uh, for the Roosters, Manu at fullback, Palga on the wing, Connor Watson at 5'8", the hot pirate. Nat Butcher back after having a child on the weekend. Zach Docker, Clay, the journeyman of journeyman in Jersey 14. Oh, boy, Timmy, what stands out to you here? Well, the first one... 
is your man Greg the Leg. Mm. So 789K, averaging 53 across his two games this season, break even of 132. Comes back – oh, sorry, may come back this week against the Roosters. Hopefully he does. Gets a nice little price drop towards that 700K mark. Then goes Bulldogs, Dolphins, Warriors, Tigers, Titans. A buy in round 12, but plays round 13. That first major buy round also against the Dogs. Potentially with Kalen Ponga there. At, I'm assuming, 0% ownership. Marju on the radar. I had to have a very hard chat with Greg Marju this week. I uh, He got... You know, he got injured three weeks ago and he fell out of my draft and we've gone undefeated since and I had to sit down with him and say, Greg, you're my second overall pick, but you don't have a fucking jersey at the moment. Mm. My CDWs have gone so well on my draft side that you have to earn your way back in. Gave him the uh, Jason Demetrio treatment. Yeah, gave him the big JD treatment. Drop yeah. down. <laughs> yeah, so show me what you're made of, Greg the leg. Uh, mate, Manu at fullback, do you buy him or not? If you buy him, I'm going to put him down for a negative 15. <laughs> Look, certainly a good buy. At fullback, he's a super coach superstar. Uh, look, Teddy, long history of concussions. Maybe they give him another week. I don't know. But the issue is they go the Knights up there this week, which I don't think it'll matter. He'll score well. But tough enough matchup. Then they go the Storm. Dragons on Anzac Day. It's a bad time to get the Dragons. Yep. Uh, Broncos, Warriors, Sharks. It is a tough draw. If he was at fullback through that, I'd be like, if he was at fullback long term and Teddy was out for a while, I'd be like moving heaven and hell to get him. Yeah. At centre, with that draw, not as confident. I think he's a great buy, but what do you think? I will also be leaving heaven and hell where they are at the moment. Yeah. I won't be going nuts for him. Um, you're always a bigger Manu fan than what I am generally. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just – I feel, mate, that Teddy, uh, he's playing for an Origin jersey over the next few weeks. I think that if he's available to come back, he'll be back in straight away. Yep. I don't think they'll take their time with Teddy to get back in, to be honest with you. Um, so, yeah, I uh, – it's going to be a nervous watch, don't get me wrong. And with a better matchup – with better matchups, maybe it does change my mind. But on the same, I'm sort of mm. – I'm happy to let it go. Are we thinking – it wasn't a good indicator on the weekend because of all the, the carnage that happened in that Bulldogs and Roosters game, but are we thinking that Angus Crichton will be an 80-minute edge back row? I know that's a very tough question, but... Fuck knows, bro. Especially with Tupanura on the bench. Like, a lot of people are going on him this week. I just think, you know, in reality, he was in his last cup to start the year. He wasn't good last year. He has looked great this year in what we've seen, and you, you mentioned New Wales Cup, he's been killing it. But break him is about 24, 25, so he's not going to make a ton of cash. I want to see him play 80, and I want to see him lock down that spot because if he goes back to the bench or if he plays 50 minutes, you've wasted a trade. I uh, I personally don't think I want to do – like, mate, Trent Robinson back to RFs is getting close to Ricky Stewart rule that areas mm. now. I just – I don't know how anyone can – is Angus the best second rower there on his day? Yeah, fucking oath he is. Mm. Do I trust that Trent's going to keep him there? Nope. Not at all. Well, you got your boy Wong lingering. We know Egan Butch can play on the edge. Tilly Tupanua, he's off to the bench. He's been starting. Like, who knows? Who knows? Uh, I'll say this. Wong has been playing lock in reserve grade. Has he? He's been playing 80 minutes, though, to be fair. Oh, my God. To be fair, Connor Watson played lock when he went back there as well. I, I, I almost think it's just something that Trent Robinson does. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Playing I, play in the middle and toughen up. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, I'm, yeah, I don't know. Friday, Storm v Bulldogs. Katmandu is going to be at this game. Make sure you say hello to her if she's there. She would really appreciate that. Yeah, come say hi if you see me. And uh, hopefully it's a good game. I don't want it to be a whitewash or anything. I want to see a little bit of a, a battle like we saw on Friday. That would be fun. Yeah, good luck with that. Um, <laughs> Storm. Uh, you're going to really... meet the Storm Dogs at Amy Park. Yeah, I'm going to Melbourne. Yeah, right. Yeah. For this clash? Just for this Not clash? Not for this clash specifically, but of all the games I've been to, I've never seen rugby league down in Melbourne. Um, uh, and I know Amy Park is a different experience and Storm supporters are a bit different. So I thought, why not? Add it to the list of things yeah, I've done. I, I have heard you're a big Kitioni Katoga fan, but nice guy. And I didn't know you're that big a fan that you wanted to travel down to <laughs> Melbourne to watch him play off the bench, but good for you. 
you have to respond to that. <laughs> oh, guys, this is going to haunt me. <laughs> <laughs> and it is haunting me. I nice guy. It. Nice guy. I've got a few friends actually that play on the Bulldogs. Mm. So None as nice as him. but You yeah. can all just relax. Yes. <laughs> um, for the doggies, Critter at one, Tracy and Fox on the wing, Kiraz mm. and Bronson Zeri in the centres, Curran named on the edge, Kickout also named, Max King named, Bailey Hayward makes his debut. Congratulations to him. I love to see that. Uh, Timmy, if this team runs out as named, I will eat my right hand. What's what's <laughs> going on? Fuck knows. Did the, I uh, thought they were all injured. Did the pardon the pun cat scanner get injured or something or whatever? <laughs> like whatever they whatever the device is that that does the scanning of these injuries. Did it break down at Belmore on the weekend and they had to wait until after Tuesday four pm to do the scans because. Half this team was injured and meant to be out for four to six weeks a couple of days ago and they all got named. I can't remember what the comment is, but if you go and have a look at the Bulldogs Instagram page, they put up some content of when he announces that Bailey Hayward's going to make his debut and he literally says to the squad something like, I don't know what's going to happen this weekend. You'll all have to stay tuned. But one guy that is playing is going to be Bailey. Yeah, I, I saw that. The, really? It was Ciro. Yeah, 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 it was, yeah it was, Ciro literally says it to them. Um Let's see if I can actually get the audio here. Here it is. Oh, shit. We've got a bit to sort out with the teams. Yeah, half your team's what? fucking injured. It's wild. So I'm expecting mass changes there. Um, it's so funny. I was sitting there with Kat yesterday. I read through the team list. I go, current on the edge. Fuck. Then I went, oh. I've already got Jill. He gives a fuck. I'm fine. I'm okay. <laughs> so I can stop doing that now. If Max King actually has broken his hand, which I thought was confirmed, and he's out for four to six weeks, Kurt Mann, obviously more of a ball playing lock, but he's also out with a broken hand for four or so weeks. Sam Hughes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me. He based 39 last week. <laughs> he's got a negative two break even. <laughs> Have you still got him? Yeah. Oh, for fuck's sake. This is horse. You know who else has him? <laughs> oh, I don't care, Kat. No one even asked you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking punishes both of you. Um, all right. Are we done with the Bulldogs injury ward? Don't get me started on the minutes for Puasa if I'm silly. <laughs> 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 okay, Broncos v the Finn from Suncorp. Broncos, Reese Walsh returns at one. A little bit of movement for little Timmy. Corey Oates on the sting. Jock Madden at seven. My little. boy Xavier Willison back on the bench along with Tristan Saylor. Hit me. Oh, the Broncos after their super difficult start to the season. Super dickful. <laughs> <laughs> Love that for Brisbane. <laughs> oh, the the Reese Walsh goal kicking in fullback soft draw chat just got me so excited. Yeah. Um, yeah, they had such a difficult draw to start the season. They now get a run of easier games. Do you think Walsh will goal kick or do you think Staggs will? I've never been able to work that one out. I've never been able to work it out either. Seriously. <laughs> He's the super pod to end all super pods if with that draw coming up of his goal kicking with Adam Reynolds out. Does it worry you for his game play without Adam Reynolds or do you think it's the yeah. game plan is just the same, get the ball? I mean, it's not ideal, but he probably just steps up more in attack. He's got to do more if that's possible. Like, not really. Yep, fair. For the Dolphins, testing you at centre. Flegler named it prop. I also thought he was out for X amount of weeks. Kenny Bromwich on the edge. Anthony Milford back on the bench. Yeah. Good to see Milfie back. I saw that and I was like, out of the blue. Still playing yep. the NRL. Still I think he's been playing for the Capras, yeah. Milfy. But can yeah. we acknowledge the fact that on the document you wrote Milf Bench? I know I brought this up in Teamless Tuesday, but I just think it's so funny. It Shout just out. says Milf Bench. Milf Bench. Shout out to my premiership winning 2016 draft team, the Milf Hunters. <laughs> Good gear. Good gear. Yeah, uh, very funny guy. Good time. Flegler, I didn't expect to see his name here. No, they did say if <clears> it's an AC joint injury, they did uh, say it was – Relatively minor, and that he'd be a chance this week. So, look, I wouldn't be surprised to see him drop off that bench, uh, off the, the starting side, I should say, this week. But promising regards for Flegler owners who could have found themselves in a bit of a hole in the front row if he was out. Uh, if it's one week, you can cop it. If it's two weeks plus, probably a sell. Joshy Kerr, I hope Flegler's out because it's good for, for my boy Josh. It's all coming up stallions at the moment. It really is. Everything yeah. is coming up fucking stallions. Uh, <laughs> when you brought Josh Kerr, I was like, eh, I don't know. I don't know about that, but since then, every, like he's played well, obviously, but every domino has fallen around him as well. It's turned well, out to be a great pick. It has, but it also, like, even the Plaths in bidding two weeks ago meant they didn't come on till second half and play that 29 minutes, scored the When trailer. I heard you complaining about that, that annoyed me so fucking much. Why? Oh, because it's just like, he scored a fucking try. Shut the fuck up. Minutes this year, 
40, 45, 26 in that game, 37 on the weekend. He played like 12 less minutes. So on the weekend, 37 minutes, he based 42. He's... His base is going at like well above a point per minute this year. He's got attack in him. Like I think he had two or three offloads on the weekend. He can bust a tackle. Oh, Josh the Kerr. only bloke I've ever met that complained about a front row forward scoring a try. It was unbelievable. You, um, know, you, you know the other best thing about him? Jewel 2RF front row forward so I can swap him with Karen. <laughs> Uh, let's move to Super Saturday. We've got the Warriors taking on the Seagulls from 3 p.m. in Auckland for the Waz. DWZ in. Cape Wall comes back in uh, for Manly. Burbo named at centre. Corey Waddell on the edge. Uh, anything here, mate? Uh, negative other than just Dallin. Dallin's going to be big watching coming weeks with Chance back. Dallin scores a hat trick this week. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Dallin scores a hat trick this week. Going at the left edge of Manly. Tommy Talao. Tommy Talao and Burbo? Mm, maybe. He went to the... He went to the left edge. Oh, yeah. maybe it will be. Maybe that will... Imagine if that Warriors right edge... What did they do? No, because Burbo defended on the left, didn't he, against Penrith. So that, what did they do? They moved Collar back to the right, did they? I don't know. You've lost me. I'm pretty sure that's what they did now I think about it. But yeah, if he if uh, DWZ is up up against Burbo and uh, Tommy Teller, hello, hello. Holy shit! Thanks yeah. for attending. <laughs> Five thirty Eels cows are uh, coming to you from Combank Stadium for the Paramount Eels. Harper returns at centre. Wild Assi at six. Bryce. Cartwright, the Cardi Party at five eight. Blaze on the extended along with Mike Acevo. Um Interesting. Yeah, yeah, especially the Cartwright at five eight. Cool. What did I say? Cut right at five eight. Yeah, nice. Don't hate it. <laughs> welcome back to welcome, welcome back to Howard Matthews of twenty thirteen. We're going to win by sixty today. Um, yeah, Bryce in the two RF. I apologise for that little bed shit. Not the first, won't be the last. Uh, for the cows, uh, mate. A lot of people expected Valia to come in. But when Chester played centre a couple of weeks ago, I thought he was fucking unreal. He ran for about 200 metres. Mm. He's only fullback, um, probably not a guy that we're going to look at. I've got no idea what his super coach price is. Uh, but I thought he was really good a couple of weeks ago, Chester. Yeah, he was. He's mid three. He's about 350K. So he's um, in a gun attacking at least Cowboys side. Huge watch. Yeah. Huge watch. That's um, an interesting one. Speaking of bed shits, uh, Kuli <laughs> Kefu Finifubiaki, 31 and 32 the past two weeks. Um, I don't know why you call consistency a bed shit. <laughs> Weird. But, yes, not stoked about it. <laughs> the one good thing for it, Rue, is – Do you have him? No, I don't. For fuck. Mate, uh, I literally sat here and read out his Q Cup stats oh, to you. you say and a lot of shit, still mate. bought you him. say a lot of shit. The one positive for To be you. fair, I'd already brought him, but I the, still would have ignored you because I don't like you. Proceed. The, the one positive <laughs> for you – He's getting the minutes, played 80 on the weekend, 67 the week That's before. the frustrating thing. Yeah, yeah. I hope he can get 95 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Might get a 45. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough watch. Uh, yeah. Was that your positive? Yeah, that was yeah. my positive. Mad. I can sit here and go through his lack of tackle busts and offloads, but I don't want to rub salt into the wound, man. Yeah, thank you. <sighs> Rabbitoh Sharks, a late game, 7.35 p.m. at a course day in for the Rabbitohs. A uh, little Clive Churchill 2.0 makes his debut. Gray, I almost said Aaron Gray there. It's not, it's Jai Gray. <laughs> Very excited to see him go around. Ty Munro returns as well. Peter Mamazelis of wasn't in the top two hookers in the club fame two weeks ago. Now is the starting hooker. Wild, Havili on the bench. Dropped was Cook, Kepi, Talis Duncan. <laughs> You smell a bit of desperate to me. I want to throw straight to Cat for this one. Yeah, oh God. Cat man do. Yeah, I told you guys I'm neutral this weekend. I don't have a team because my team has Damien. Fan of the game. My team has Damien Cook in it. Fan of the game. She's under the wing yeah. where she belongs. Yeah. How good. Yeah. Coming on, no, flying I, with me. I, don't, I, I mean, I throw the question back at you because I'm trying to understand the logic behind the decisions that JD's made. But I... I don't know if he's just flexing some last-minute authority before he's kicked out or if there's actually a plan here, but to not play Damien Cook, I just think it's a case of not reading the room very well right now. Similar to my eggs on a Saturday morning scrambling. Mm. <laughs> Timbo, I can't make sense of it. No, nah, I'm reluctant to go too hard on it because it makes such little sense that I'm like... It could work. No, no, not it could oh, work. Okay. I'm, 
I don't even care if it does work. I still hate if they could win forty mil. I'd still hate the move to drop Damien Cook. But yeah. it's almost like, what do we not know? Like, yeah, yeah does Cookie said something, or like, what's going on? That's because, where my head is. Because to drop like this club legend, one of the best blokes in the game, a bloke who, in my opinion, well, he's not been his best form, but he's. He gives 100% every week. He's certainly not the problem in this bunny side. I just cannot make any sense of it. So I'm like, I don't – there's got to be some reasoning behind it. Yeah. I'd love to hear it. Yeah. yeah. I, I, don't, I don't understand the choice. I think obviously Ty's fit. I understand throwing him in the mix. I understand – at least, at the very least, putting Mama Zealous on your on your bench, but starting him over Cook makes no sense to me. I'll tell you what: a lot of South fans I talk to, and like I'm not saying you're you're, you're one of these cats. A lot of South fans I talk to, like they're talking about, oh, we get Ty back though. I'm like, Ty's a very good player, but he's played six first grade games. Oh, he's got a, a lot of issues yeah. in defence. Like he's not going to solve your problem. Ty's not going to help at all. Ty has such enormous potential, but. If it was the good bunny side that we know and love from pre-round 12 last year, Ty'd be a near must-have buy on the wing for the bunnies. Yep. He scored many <laughs> tries. But he's small. He's not going to eat yards up. He's had defensive issues. He's not going to help their problems. Yeah, no. very tough. Uh, for the Cronulla Sharks, Ido remains at centre. Great to see. Hazelton stars. Nikodo comes back in. Talakai back to the bench. Worth noting on the extended, uh, Hamlin Mele and Rudolph floating around there. Um, if you brought a Talakai two weeks ago, I would have patted you on the back and said, that's fucking courageous. Mm. And my God, you've been fisted. Yeah, I think it was 15 points last week. Ooh. Hit back row and now he's been moved to the bench. Far out. Bold move from uh, from Fitzy. And to Fitzy's credit, because the Sharks are going half right this year, <clears throat> pardon me, He, we've been critical of him <clears throat> in the past for – he's almost too loyal yeah, and he's not willing to make sort of big changes. Like he did the Moylan one for Trindle late last year, but, God, it took a lot of missed tackles and tries yep. that through to do that. So it's like, look, whether I agree with it or not, it's like, all right, he's uh, he's made a move that can hopefully benefit this team. We saw Euro last week, had some good moments. Uh, we all, we know you all that he's certainly his number one fan, number one season ticket holder of the Euro show. Yeah, do not go early on him though. He's played one game. Yeah, yeah, there's no need to go early. I, I think you 100% plan to trade him in next week. I think he lights up the South Sydney Rabbitohs here. You mentioned before he's got that good matchup on that edge. Yeah, it doesn't have the – not that the Jack White edge has been overly solid defensively, but you also don't want to be going one-on-one with Jack White. And so yeah. it's like he gets the better edge. Look, every chance that Iro is the, the – Number one most traded in play next week. Yeah, yeah, that's how I see it playing out. And, yeah, it's a good point about Craig Fitzgibbon. Credit to him, making a big move there. Um, let's move to – also their halfback is Nico Hines. I might be buying him this week. Let's move on. Sunday, Tigers, that's out of pure fear and nothing else. <laughs> Tigers, Dragons, 4.05 p.m. out at Campbelltown. I believe uh, Hammy called it the Matty Head Cup, which is super exciting. If you see Hammy out there, take his stupid fucking Tigers hat off his head and oh stomp it into the ground. Round, let him have it. He'll be hard to miss. Oh, will he ever? Um, okay, for the Tigers, Seafarth on the edge, Johnny Bateman out, Simkin on the bench, Kapoa and Matamua also on the bench there. Anything with this Tigers side, mate? Um, no, but look, you know, we're pretty humble, Guru. We don't often um, gloat about things, especially when we get them right. You know, we love to highlight things we get wrong, but Justin Nolan got 32 last week. Yeah, when Tim arrived today, he actually kicked the door in Van Dam style and yelled, fuck Justin O'Leary, which I thought was a little bit over the top personally, but <laughs> each to their own. Um, Titans, Kieran Foran named. Uh, Fafita is starting. Hello. What the fuck did I just do? Sorry. Uh, did we just say Tigers, Titans? Did we just have the wrong conversation? Yeah. yeah we did. <laughs> I'll cut it out. You know what? Yeah, maybe cut it out. That was probably too bad, wasn't it? Or should we just run with it? <laughs> no, I'll 
cut it out. We're cutting that out. All right, we're back on track. We actually just kind of made up a game of football there and spoke about it for a few minutes and then realised we got the teams mixed up, so that was good fun. Uh, Tigers, Dragons, 4.05 p.m. Campbelltown. Tigers, Seafarth on the edge, replacing Johnny Bateman. Simpkin on the bench. Kapoa, Matamua on the bench as well for the Dragons. Uh, Harm Sally comes in at prop. Eisenhuth still at 13. Uh, he'll probably get switched back to the bench and Flano will shock the world again. Uh, <laughs> anything to touch on here? Uh, negative. Negative. Raiders v. the Titans, 6.15 p.m. from the nation's capital uh, for the Durs. You've got a debutant at fullback. How exciting. Chevy. Chevy. This is exciting. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. As we, Like we've said in the past and, and said sort of through the preseason, we think we said he needed to go back to Inswell's Cup, spend some time there, play with men for a bit longer, get used to the in and out of, of playing with the big boys. Uh, and he's done it. He's gone well, held his own, had some nice attacking stats there. Look, not expecting him to set the world alight, but also what an opportunity to debut against the Titans at home. Yeah, and I think that's the big point for Chevy. I don't want him to set the world alight. I just want him to be solid. Yeah. Just want him to be solid and hold his own, which I, the the highlights will come. He's extremely talented, Chevy. Um, big, big fan. Hosking returns on the edge. Trey Mooney on the bench. Very excited to see Trey mm. Mooney go. And uh, Corey Horsburgh out for a few weeks, which I think helps our boy Morgan Smithies, who, I don't know, did he turn a corner on the weekend? Well... You mentioned on Bloat the other day, but he played his 80 minutes. The Raiders looked awesome. Ricky, you know, you can only assume loves him. Uh, I think he did. And a lot of people sold. Smithies, what is he now, 423K, break even of 15. He scored, played the full 80, based 65. I think he, I don't have it in front of me, but I think he had like 19 hit-ups or something. Yes, I did have it in my it weekly was article and like 37 impressive. tackles or something. And I know you made a song and dance, rightly so, about the tackle break a few weeks ago. How about the offload? On the the offload. Agar was blocking when he did He's like, oh, this bloke loves an offload. <laughs> Does he block? Does he block? <laughs> yeah, not your finest moment, block. Yeah, not your worst though. Yeah, no. Nah. Don't get me wrong. Um, now for the Gold Coast Titans, <laughs> foreign name for feeder on the edge, uh, Pahulu coming off the bench. I think he's a little front row forward to keep an eye on. Uh, foreign, tough as nails, mate. Yes. Looked like he was potentially gone for a while. They only played 20 odd minutes on the game, uh, in the game on the weekend. Big for Dave Fafida, who first ate him in the game of the season, 81 points, 59 mm. in base, which is huge for Fifi. He's going to be the only probably super hatch relevant thing for a while, I'd imagine. Tempted to go early? I am. If I had the trades and I had the money and my mm. name was Cat, I would seriously yeah. consider it. <laughs> uh, I would love to bring in Fifi, but um, I think I'll have to wait two or three weeks. The other issue is, you know, everyone's making plans to get Nathan Cleary back in at, you know, almost 900K. So it's like, can you get in for feeder and then have the cash to get in Cleary? It makes it tough, doesn't it? It does make it tough, yeah. I've got to buy Heinz this week, so, yeah, it's going to be a tight little squeeze. We're also we're getting reasonably close to Origin too. Mm. Fifi and a team that's yeah. struggling. So it's the other thing to consider, but I, uh, I'm i going to have Fafita at some point. I'll, I be, able, sure. I'll be able to go um, via Jules Sam Hughes to Fafita for about 100K in a few weeks. Anyway, <laughs> fuck that guy. <laughs> let's move on. Uh, let's have a look at Blue Wealth Property, our sponsors for 2024. Shout out to the team over there. And do you reckon the boys would have enjoyed seeing the 04 Bulldogs jersey back the other day or oh what? Oh, my goodness. Seeing them coming out. Against obviously uh, the replay of the 2004 grand final, famous grand final against the Roosters, Doggies 16 13. To do it as underdogs come out, lead 18 nil and blow them off the park. Oh, in those jerseys, Mort, Tony, they would have, they'd still be buzzing. They would be absolutely flying. I think, uh, I think Tone had his, uh, his young bloke's 18th birthday on the weekend. Mm. So that would have been a Larry oh. Emder for the ages. Um, now let's have a look at upcoming events. Wednesday, the 1st of May. That's the first day of May. How to pay off your mortgage with an investment property. That one is live at Sydney Olympic Park and it's via the webinar. 6 30 p.m. in the room, 7 p.m. on line. It got a mortgage. Learn how an investment property can help you pay it off quicker. Something your mum and dad didn't tell you about because they didn't know. How good. I almost read out the uh, HTTP slash smart to blue wealth there. <laughs> Thankfully, I didn't. I would have stopped you. Thank you. Yeah, look, I, if I had a mortgage, I'd be there. Unfortunately, Rue, uh, unlike yourself, I'm not on a seven-figure salary. Uh, you'll be attending? 
Eight. Um, and <laughs> yes, if I can at some point stop drowning in my mortgage, I would love to do the same. <laughs> this is where you got to talk to Mort's though. Mm. Uh, yeah, something that I know I'll be looking into over the next couple of years. Very exciting. And uh, mm. like we've said it before, we'll say it again, but the way that uh, Mort's and Tony just explain things is just unbelievable. Yeah. It just it simplifies everything for for me personally who can't understand shit. It's fantastic. Well, that's it, mate. They they keep you know putting it down our throats for good reason, but it's education is the key, and it's you know teaching you how to do these things, not just helping you with mortgages, with how to get into problems, teaching you how to do it. Yeah. And the uh, the descri- the link is in the description of the YouTube, both our podcasts, everywhere. Mm. If you can't find us, send it a message and we will send you in the right direction. A lot of people signing up, a couple of people having meetings and whatnot. Mm. Good times. Exciting times ahead, mate. Yeah, absolutely love that. Now, we're going to get into this Timmy's stats deep dive. And I'm going to leave it with Timmy for a second because my laptop's on 1%. I need to go find myself a little Uzi Kawaja to sort myself <laughs> out. So you take us away, Timbo. That's fantastic from you, mate. Thank right. you. I'll run the show for all. So Dylan Brown, six most traded out player this week. Look, not going to entirely blame the combination with Talangi for a poor score last week. Saved it with a late try assist for Mike Acevo. Uh, but he played two games last year in combination with Dion Arcee, who I'm a big fan of Arcee. I think he'll have a big, big game this weekend, try and nail down that half spot with Mitchie Moses out. Two games with him late last year. Scored 88 against the Roosters. This was the back fight at the end of the year when the Roosters were playing for top eight spot. They're on a huge win streak and firing. Uh, and then he scored 81 against the Panthers in a full-strength Panthers outfit in that one. So, look, very small sample size, but bodes pretty well for Dill Brown in that. So very keen on him. Big uh, ass guy, huh? Yeah, I, you heard that? Yeah, I yeah, did hear I that. heard it as well as soon Me as I Me and had it. a little giggle to ourselves, yeah, a little I, bubble bath. Uh, yeah. I was hoping it wasn't that obvious, but I, I also heard it. <laughs> Good um, times. But, yeah, Ru, it's Dill Brown, I think, uh, with, with Dan Arcee. Oh, it, it couldn't be a better sample size of those two games last year. Yeah, fair shout. Uh, <clears throat> mate, what about Stefano? What about his form coming back? He's playing so well that I reckon Freddie would not would play him for more than 13 minutes at the moment. <laughs> either time or half time, either way of half time. Good shout. Oh, my goodness. Stefano, Uta Kamanu. Jeez, tell you what, if you need a front row forward, 555K, he's averaging 63 points. 58 minutes per game and 50 in base. The best, best thing about him, Rue, in a front row forward, there's attacking upside. So 66 minutes against the Dolphins. There was injuries that aided that a little bit, but 58 in base. Best thing, 20 tackle breaks across his first four games and four offloads. So he's busting five tackles per game. That is huge for front row forward. Yeah, and I think it's pretty evident that uh, he's become the guy that Benji trusts now. Yeah. Um, you have, like... Even over the weekend, I don't think it was injury affected, but like David Clemmer only played 25 minutes. Wow. He just didn't put him back on the field. Alex Twole came on and did a good job, but you can tell at the moment Stefano is the guy in the pack. So I've been hurt too many times personally, but the stats are the stats. Yeah. He's playing good footy. Um, oh, Zach Lomax, hello, mate. What a season he is having. He is an absolute weapon at the moment. <sighs> He's... In super great circles, Jermaine Asako 2.0 Ooh. from last year. He really is. Had like, Jermaine last year, got Lomax this year in my draft time. Yeah, not not only because I don't own him, but so many similarities. On the wing, goal kicking for, you know, the Dolphins last year, not expected to do well, struggled. They finished 13th or 14th or whatever. Dragons not expected to do well, question attacking opportunity. He was 112 against the Knights on the weekend in a very well-beaten team in terrible conditions. He had a try, a try assist, six tackle breaks. He had five offloads in those conditions and 22 runs. He's averaging 82.6 for the year. He's averaging 22.2 runs per game and 5.6 tackle breaks per game. Hard to knock. And it sounds like he's on the verge of playing fullback. Wild. Mm -hmm. I mean, he could play fullback. I reckon there's a sniff he plays this weekend. The way Flano spoke about Sloan on the weekend after the game, every chance. Yep, didn't miss. Uh, great shout there. Oh, talk to me about Nico Hines. Yeah. I mean, I know you mentioned you're keen to get him in. It's just 
Look, he's had an underwhelming, obviously, start to the season by his standards. Bounced back against the Raiders uh, before they're both 94 points. He's averaging 62, a break-even of 104. Uh, so very, very achievable, certainly, by Nico's standards. Just probably alluding to his lack of attacking stats this year uh, compared to last season. So this season he's had one try assist, no tries, no line breaks, five tackle breaks. Last year, so one try assist this year, he was averaging 1.4 try assists per game last year. This year he's averaging 1.2 tackle breaks per game. He averaged 2.75 per game last year. And he had five tries for the year, to be fair. Uh, offloads per game, doing one per game this year. He was 1.45 per game last year. So all those key attacking areas for Nico have just been significantly down on last season. Still averaging 62, which is, by his standards, terrible. But if they start to come, yeah. Well, like, what do you thought? Like, I suppose my question is, you mentioned you want to get him in. You're scared of him. Is it the Trindle combination that has led to these stats dropping? Uh, is there anything else influencing it? Do you think he's going to get back to that 90-plus average? How do you see it? Uh, I said from the start of the season, I don't think he'll be that top-shelf 90 guy. I think he's going to be about a mid to high 80s. Yeah. I, I think he will find form. And I, honestly, there's a game like this weekend is the sort of game where Nico could put on. 150, yeah. without a doubt, which is why I'm buying him back this week. Um, I think it's worth noting, you know, I had people message me after that game against the Raiders and go, 94, he's back. Bro, he was on 60 with 40 seconds to go in yeah. the game. He had a try assist on the very last play of the game. Like, he is not back to where he was. And even with a try assist on the very last play of the game, he still fell below his average last year. Yeah. Like, the one thing I love from that game, though, to me, you have a look at his base from that game, 42. It's Holy not because shit. of a lack of effort. Nico's fucking trying his that's heart it. out. That's yeah. it. He's in everything. He's getting a shitload of touches. And that's where I'm like, I'm not a concerned owner. But like, of course, I wish he was scoring better. No shit. But the effort's there, yeah. as you said. So, look, I'm happy with him. I think he bounces back. I think the attack will come. Yeah, for sure. And like, I look at him now, 834K. I think that's where he should be. Yeah. I think that's about – I I, don't reckon he'll get above 900 for the rest of the year, to be yep. honest with you. I reckon he'll sit around here. So I'm happy to buy him again. And, look, the reality is which other halfbacks do you want over Nicker? Who are the guys? We had a good chat about last night. But, look, I'm Nico. I've only from the start. I am making a plan to get clear in within the next week or two on return. Mate, there's a serious case for Sean Johnson. I know you're always like – Never an SJ Supercoach fan, but they've got Manly over there this week. He's got a break in of 21. He's 690K, uh, impacted a little bit not by not goal kicking early on, but he then goes into the Dragons, into the Titans, mm. into the Knights. Like the, the reality is he averaged 78 last year, and we, I think we both agree, the Warriors look better this year than they did last year. Yep. At very least, it's like a two, three-week play. I don't mind SJ. But, like, look, long-term, I still think it's Cleary Hines. I do, but we said this for a long time last year and he was killing it, SJ. Yeah, he was killing it. But, mate, like, he has to he has to kill it to score well in Supercoach. Mm. Like, we, we just spoke about the last game I watched Hines play. Like, he scored 94. He had attacking stats on the last play. Sweet. But, like... Could SJ have played better on the weekend? Bro, he, he scored. He had 52 in scoring stats, 41 in creative. That's 93 points. He scored 112. Mm. Like he has to do a lot to score points. And you know what? I agree with you. Over the next few weeks, Manly, Dragons, Titans, he's going to do a lot so he's going to score well. So as you said, for a few-week play, I get it. But personally, I'd rather hold the trades and just have the two guys that I know can absolutely kill it. If you – Mate, if, if you tell me that Nico comes out and has 52 in scoring starts and 41 in creative starts, I'm going, okay, he scored 170. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Th no, that's my concern. I'm, I'm, I'm Nico and, uh, and Clear as well. Yeah. So. But, yeah, for a short-term play, if you've got SJ already or you're making a short-term play, I get it. Yeah. I 100% get it. Well, it's his break even, 21. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So 691, that's a good little price to like it's. Well, and that's the other thing I said yeah. last night. I'm like. He's also 160k cheaper than yep. those other two. Like, yep, completely fair. No, no, I, I get, I get where people are coming from with that play. Uh, let's talk about his halves partner, Tamare Martin. Really popular buy this year, this week, I should say. Uh, was awesome in his first game of the season, replacing Luke Metcalf. 98 points, dual 58 fullback, 363k. Not going to call it a stat, probably deep dive this one, but just his four 80 minute games at 58 to start last season. I think it was prior to injury. He averaged 47 and a half. Mm. 
never been overly super coach relevant. I will add in though, again though, that the Warriors look unreal. So there's no reason why he can't. I don't know why you go <laughs> early again, but lots of people are trading him in. Have a look at him for another week. If he kills it and that break even is negative, whatever it is, maybe next week. What do you think? Yeah, I definitely wouldn't be going this week. Uh, and you know what, Simi, you're right. And I was about to say the same thing before you said it. He's not super coach relevant, but which five eights are at the moment? Exactly. So, fuck, if you think he's going to play good footy, once again, he's got the same draw as the uh, as Sean Johnson, which won't shock anyone as they play for the same team. Manly, Dragons, Titans. Mate, he could score really well over the next few weeks. So, Make a great cash, then you move him to whoever it might be. Especially if he comes out and plays confidently against this manly side and then you've got the Dragons and the Titans to come and he's got a low, like his break-even is negative 25 now. Fuck knows what it could be with a good game next week. I get it. Yeah. Interesting one. One to keep an eye on there, <laughs> Tomato Martin. Um, fuck, I feel like we're just, we are just spending a lot of trades in weird spots this year I that I hate. But I think you just got to keep in mind that just everyone's in the same boat. Everyone's just scrambling for cash, doing weird shit. Uh, Jacob Kiraz, Canterbury Bulldog Centre. What do we got? Yeah, look, we've shown a bit about him, and this is sort of <clears throat> regurgitating similar enough stats to a few weeks ago, but a lot of owners out there are not sure what to do with him. And we mentioned a few weeks ago doing exactly what we thought he was going to do. He has one big ton and only one score over 50 points this season. All of those were like all like late 40s, to be fair. Um, just no attacking stats. Five games this season, he has one try. No try assist, one line break and one line assist. He's averaging 16.6 runs per game, 4.6 tackle breaks per game, 1.8 offloads per game. Owners have just got to sit there and go, all right, do we think any attack's going to come or is he just going to average 50 to 60 uh, and they're not going to? I'm not known. I'm glad I'm not because it's a weird, tough decision to make. I don't know. I mean, just completely off the dome, every attacking set you just read out was in that game against the Titans from memory. Try, yeah, line yeah. break. So, yeah, I but mean, like it was. I think it was only like a try and line break for a hundred points. So he yeah. didn't do much. So, yeah, he's not a bad guy to have. But I just think with money to be made elsewhere and stuff, I would be moving off Kiraz personally. But yeah, they've also got obviously Melbourne, in Melbourne this week in a depleted side. Couldn't be any worse. They've got to buy in two or three weeks. I'd be tempted to move off too. But I can see absolutely why people. It's one of those Melbourne. annoying ones that you didn't get it wrong. Yeah. But you just didn't get it right. Yeah, there's yeah. just other – there's better ways to be right yeah. now, I think. Um, okay, let's have a look at El Capitano's this week, mate. Uh, first cab off the rank. How are we feeling about KP in Newcastle Thursday night? Like him. Very serious option for a straight C. Yeah. Don't – you know, just the Thursday night skipper. I hate a Thursday night skipper. Never seems to work. You know what, and uh, this is a really toxic trait that I have in my mm. personality, like the fact that everyone says I hate Thursday skippers, that makes me want to go, well, fuck you, I'm well, doing Well, I've Thursday always been skipper. the same, mate. I, like because I go people people want to have the opportunity to VC loop and the Thursday night curse and all that, so I'm like, sweet, it's another night of footy. Like it shouldn't change anything. Yeah. But And again, I, I don't, you know, just if he goes 50 and then you've got to sit there for four days with a 50 skipper, it's like, oh, it's a long time. Yeah. I, um, I'm i in an interesting boat, mate. Uh, I've got my fullbacks, KP and Pappy. Pappy's got Canterbury in Melbourne. Which one would you say that I should VC? Ponga or mate, Pat? I reckon I'd straight C Pappy. Straight C? Wow. The doggies with all these injury concerns, mm. they will be like – with how wet it was, heavy under leg, they will be gassed, I reckon, for this game on the weekend. Melbourne are flying, plenty of points to name. I'd straight see Cappy. That Cappy, Pappy. I don't mind that actually, Cappy. Cappy, <laughs> yeah. I, I actually really like that. Um, I would. Cappy, he terrifies Pappy. me as an on owner. He's pretty highly owned, Pappy. So, yeah, I think I would. Yeah, I'll probably – I'll have a look at it. I'll probably VC, but – Maybe I'll grow a pair before then. Don't hold your breath. Uh, Friday night, Bronx Fins. It's only really Reese Walsh you consider as a pod play here. Yeah, look, I don't really think many are going to own him. So, And I also want to have it confirmed before – look, I'm not getting him in because I'm happy with my Pong and Turbo combination, especially after this week. Man, they have a really nice draw. Titans next week, which is huge. So I won't be getting him in, but – not uh, overly relevant ones there. Wise man, we've got <laughs> SJ and Tommy Turbo going head to head here. Uh, mate, Tommy Turbo is a no go for me this week. Uh, I know that's bold to say, and maybe I'm 
Maybe I'm playing with fire. What about Cat broke our turbo figurine <laughs> last week and he comes out and puts 100 on Penrith's head? Yeah, can you um snap the legs of it this week, please, Cat? Because I might see him. Just see um, Parramatta sent us out a statue for her to break. <laughs> they sent out a Regan Campbell Gillard statue it's for Campbell her Gillard. to break. It oh also says, goodness. for the collection, fragile, keep away from Cat. Well, guess who's got it in their hands? That is elite. They're good. Uh, yeah, unreal. Um, yeah, I, I would be staying away from Turbo as a captain this week, but... I don't know. Your face told me you might be thinking differently. Nah, nah, no. Okay, Warriors good. too good defensively. Yeah. That's not a game on a target. What about SJ? You say not manly. You're going to throw up. They just beat bloody Penrith. Mm. They don't mm. like if it's shit manly. Then sure, but we don't. If it's good manly, no. I, I think that game against Penrith would have taken a lot out of this yeah. manly mob going to New Zealand. I don't know. I, I, I think New Zealand put a bit of a score on them. Yeah. I like him as a VC. I probably wouldn't see him. I think we'll get to him shortly, but I, I think Nico's the man. Okay. Uh, Parramatta <laughs> Cows, Drinky, you can consider him. Uh, you've got an interesting little take. On, not an interesting, it's a good take. but Para are outsiders. I yeah. think Para win. Yeah. I, I think they're, again, hit or miss, but there's a good football side in there. There's a very good forward pack in there. I think after that embarrassment last week against the Raiders – I think they'll they'll live for this. They're back at Combank where they play really good footy. Cowboys look like flat track bullies a little bit this year. I think their pack's okay. I think Paris pack is probably better. Uh, I think Para win it. Yeah, fair shout. And you said Parramatta hit and miss, so are the Cowboys. Yeah, exactly. So I think we get a high scoring affair here. Yeah, that's fun. where I think oh. Drinky could still be interesting. Heaps in this game. of supercoach points. To, yeah. To, yeah, heaps. Uh, okay, <laughs> the main attraction: Nico Hines v the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Uh, I don't think three dollars twenty is enough for the bunnies. Mm. Uh, I am bringing in Hines, and there's every chance that I captain him. So similar to Tim and Joey Manu, my history with Nico Hines, well, I sort of got one up on him a few weeks ago, but it hasn't been great, let's be honest here. Mm. Uh, I think it's about 1,000 to 1 in Nico's favour. Um, I'm seriously considering captaining him. I think he's the play. As we said, he's, he's gone well enough without any real major attacking stats. Uh Fresh off the buy, some cattle returning in the pack. Yeah. Bunnies are a basket case at the moment. You know, they lose Latrell Mitchell, they lose Damian Cook. When I say lose, they dropped him, so questionable uh, terminology. I just I like uh, I like Nico Hines. So I'm thinking V C KP into C Nico. Yeah, I'm probably <laughs> thinking Ponger into uh sorry, Pappy into Hines at the moment. Yeah. Uh anyone else in the last two games? Like, surely not. Anyone grab your attention? No, nah, mate, not in those. No ones. way. All right. Good show. Good show. We done and dusted. I can say. Hit the frog and toad. Uh, make sure you go follow the Brew Crew. Go join the Patreon there. Got the stats in there this week. Timmy's got his coming next week. Uh, plenty happening. Plenty of weapons to add to your arsenal. Katmandu's going to be in Melbourne this weekend. So if you're down yep. there, make sure you go and say hello. Blue Wealth Property, links are in the description. What did you do on Playbook last night? We had a really good chat to open the show about uh, when the trade strategy turns from cash generation to focusing on those points. Mm. Uh, here's an exclusive. It was not exclusive because it went live last night. It's about now. It's within the next couple of weeks. I'm, I'm big time looking at starting to go just a few – happy with my cash generation, going a few point-directed plays. So when that changed, we also had a good look at fullbacks. We were all in consensus that everyone wants Ponga. Who's the best fullback to partner with Kale and Ponga leading into Origin 1? Who's your pick? Sir Thomas. (laughs) Never heard of him. (laughs) All right. Thanks for joining us once again, Legends. We have got the late show at 8 p.m. tonight, so make sure you are there for that. It's going to be rapid fire. It's It's going to be all happening. So make sure you come and join us there on the late show. Appreciate it as always, guys, and we will see you next week.